Section 8.4, Applications to Economics and Biology. The consumer surplus for a commodity is defined as the integral of lowercase p of x minus p from zero to capital X, where p of x lowercase is the demand function and capital P is the current selling price for the amount of commodity capital X that can currently be sold. So over here, on the demand function, we have a certain point, capital X, capital P, that indicates the uh, current selling price for a commodity and how many we can sell. But in general, consumers might be willing to pay um, more than the current selling price. So this difference between what they're willing to pay and what they actually pay is called the consumer surplus. So over here, this lowercase p is our price that we're willing to pay. Over here, this capital P is the price that we're paying. So then the difference between these two values is how much we save. So this is our savings. And then we multiply that by uh, the number of units that we're buying. And that's this little d of x because we break up our demand curve, lowercase p, this guy, into, uh, well, the area underneath it, into rectangles. And these rectangles, uh, you know, they follow certain subintervals. So, like, here's one subinterval over here. And then we see the number of units in the subinterval. We see the consumer surplus for that particular subinterval. And then we add it to the next one, and the next one, the next one. We take the limit as the number of these subintervals tends to infinity, and we get the consumer surplus of the commodity in general. So let's do an example of this. The demand for a product in dollars is P equals 1200 minus 0.2x minus 0.0001x squared. Let's find the consumer surplus when the sales level is 500. So we're given the sales level 500, so that's going to be capital X. And we're given that capital P is 1200 minus 0.2 times 500, because capital P is lowercase p at the value capital X, minus 0.00. .00 0, 1 times 500 squared, which is 1075. So now we have this point over here. So let's do our integral. Our integral will go from 0 to capital X, so it goes from 0 to, to 500, and it's of lowercase p, the demand function, minus our current price. So that's from 0 to 500 of 1200 minus 0.2x minus 0.0001x squared minus 1075dx. So that's equal to the integral of uh, 125 minus 0.2x minus 0.0001x squared. So we take the antiderivative, we get 125x minus 0.1 squared, 0.1x squared minus 0.0001 times x cubed over 3. And we evaluate that from 0 to 500. So we get 125 times 500 minus 0.1 times 500 squared. And then we subtract off uh, 0 0.00001 times 500 cubed all over 3. And notice there's no contribution from 0. So this actually ends up being $33,333.33. The cardiac output 
of the heart is the volume of blood pumped by the heart per unit time, that is, the rate of flow into the aorta. It is given by uh, F equals the amount of dye divided by the, this integral of C of T dt from 0 to T. So from 0 to T is the time interval until the dye is cleared, and C of T is the concentration of the dye at time T. The idea here is that we can measure blood flow by um, a dye dilution method. We inject a whole bunch of dye into the heart. We insert a probe, which measures the concentration that leaves the heart, but it does this at equally spaced time intervals. So what we do is we take um, concentration at each of these intervals. We multiply it by volume. And then we, you know, add up all of those concentration times volumes, and we get an integral. And that integral is equal to the total amount of dye injected into the right atrium. So that means that this concentration at a certain time interval, C of Ti, times volume, which is um, our cardiac output, the, the flow F times delta T, because our rate times time the time will cancel and just leave us with volume. So that means that the total amount of dye A is equal to the integral of, from 0 to T of C of T times F dt, because the total amount of dye that we injected is equal to all of these concentration times volume products. So then we just um, take out F, because notice the integrals with respect to T, it does not have anything to do with F. So we pull out f, and then we divide by the integral to get um, a, 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 to get f by itself. So we get a divided by the integral is equal to f, because f is what we wanted to begin with. So let's do an example of this. A 5 milligram bolus of dye is injected into a right atrium. The concentration of the dye in milligrams per liter is measured in the aorta at one second intervals as shown in the table. Let's estimate the cardiac output. So in this case, we have that A equals 5. We have delta T is equal to 1. And we have capital T is equal to 10. So we want to know what the integral from 0 to capital T, so 0 to 10, of the concentration dt is. So how about we use Simpson's rule to approximate this? So we'll take Simpson's rule with n equals 10. So remember that that's uh, delta t over 3, so that's 1 third times our first f value, so that's c evaluated as 0, which is 0. Plus, remember, Simpson's rule goes in the form of 4, 2, 4, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2 for the uh, coefficients for each of the y values. So this will be 4 times our next y value of 0.4 plus 2 times our next value of 2.8 plus 4 times 6.5 plus... 2 times 9.8 plus 4 times 8.9 plus 2 times 6.1 plus 4 times 4.0 plus 2 times 2.3 I don't like how that 2 came out and plus 4 times 1.1 plus 0. And then we, you know, do the math. We get all oh, this is approximately 41.87. So that's what the integral is. Remember, we have to take our A and divide it by the integral to get the cardiac output. So let's do that now. We'll say that capital F, the cardiac output, is A divided by the integral from 0 to 10 
of the concentration. So that's 5, as we calculated before, divided by 41.87, which is about 0.12 liters per second. And if we want, we can convert that into 7.2 liters per minute.